Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This video is going to be all about my makeup memory box. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is going to be an overview of what's currently in my makeup memory box. I just finished filming all of my declutters in March and you will very often when you've watched any of my declutters, hear me talking about my makeup memory box. And some people are just really curious what's in there and what I've kept around over the years. I did declutter it at some point in my lifetime here on YouTube so I can make sure to link you to that if I can still find it. And uh, so let me just get to what's in this makeup memory box because there's a lot here. In case you're new here and you've never seen one of my videos, hi, my name is Maika, I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love trying out eyeshadow palettes, SS and Catrice, and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, I hope you'd like to consider subscribing. Yes, so as you could see in the thumbnail, I have a true box. Here it is, filled with makeup, which, I, which is my makeup memory box. It is a, a different sort of box than what I used to keep things in, and technically, technically, I have a second box that holds all of my Urban Decay eyeshadow palettes. So I think there may only be, is there an Urban Decay palette in here? I don't think there is anymore. I think I put all of my Urban Decay palettes together, but I show you my Urban Decay eyeshadow palette collection as part of my eyeshadow palette collection video once a year anyway. So I feel I don't need to show you that. As I mentioned in the intro, I did declutter my makeup memory box a few years ago when I felt it was getting too full and I very often put things in the makeup memory box that I wanna move out of my makeup collection, um, but that I don't wanna declutter for real. So these are things that have that are really special to me, either for just pure, pure nostalgia reason, reasons, or they have really stunning packaging and I don't wanna get rid of them, or maybe they were part of like a limited edition collection. So those are all things that tend to go in here. Some of it is super affordable, other things are <laughs> um, super expensive as well, but just because something is expensive doesn't mean I get to keep it around, you could say. So let me dig through this so I can show you some of these things. So first things first is where the makeup memory box ever got started, and it's with this little Dior thing. I got this as a gift with purchase one year, and in here is some of the oldest makeup I have. Um, it also has some perfumes in. So this is an Armani perfume. And I don't even know what this is, but these I've had since I was a kid. Um, so these I was like, my aunt gave these to me at a sleepover at her place one year. And I've always kept them. I used to wear them. She just had these perfume, perfume sample, samples. So if you're familiar with fragrances from like the eighties and the nineties, then Maybe you know these, but yeah, I don't wear those anymore. And then one year, my parents actually went to France on vacation and they got this little perfume set from France, which I don't think I've ever used these, but it was gifted to me when I was like a teenager. So that's why I have those. And then I have some eyeshadows in here. Um, I have a bourgeois eyeshadow. Um, this is what I always would wear back in my clubbing days. And it's this green thing. Um, so that's uh, 20 years old at least, because that's when I went to clubs. And then I think, yeah, this is a little, this is a Dior sample that I got with this mascara one year, back when I first got into makeup about 15 to 16 years ago. Uh, it's just a neutral eyeshadow palette, really cute. And then this is a little YSL thing. This is the Ombre Solo Double Effect and it's in a pink shade. I like. I, I don't even know what I was thinking, um, because look at look at this. It's so 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 tiny. And look at the dent. Look at the dent. I used to wear this all the time back when I first first got into makeup. Uh, we're talking like 20, 2008, 2009 ish or so. And then I have this Chanel thing. I used to think I had to get Chanel for it to be good, like expensive things. And it's just a shimmering white. I used to use this as, an, as a brow bone highlight, in case you're wondering. <laughs> so yeah, these are some of the oldest makeup products I have. 
So yes, those are some of the oldest things I still have. These are very nostalgic for me, and that's the only reason why they get to stay. These aren't necessarily pretty or anything, but in within my makeup memory box, I have another makeup memory box, you could say. So quite a large category, and the reason why I'm taking these out first is because if, if I don't take them out first, uh, it's gonna fall everywhere, and it is lipsticks. So some of these are some of the first high-end lipsticks I bought. Remember what I just said? I thought makeup had to be expensive for it to be good. So one of the first ever lipsticks I bought is by Chanel. This is just their one, one of their Rouge Coco in shade 23. Um, I remember I bought this in Germany. Um, I had to speak German in order to buy this one. When did I go to Germany? Was that 2009? I think so. So this is a really old lipstick, but I don't wear shades like that. Like I've learned so much about what I like and what I don't like. Is this the one that's broken? Oh no, this is not the one that's broken. Uh, this is a Rouge Dior in 999. I think this is the one that I actually ended up buying for a full face makeup look with Dior. And this is their classic Suits Everyone red lipstick and I just adore the packaging of this. This is in the matte texture, but I have so many red lipsticks that I felt I didn't need to keep it around in my actual makeup collection. So that's why it's here. I also have one of the Rouge Allure Velvets from Chanel, uh, which has the, I hope you can see this. It has the press on and then this again, this kind of pinky coral, not my shade, but I love the packaging which is why I still have that. Um, then I have some more Dior things. Um, and these, again, I just kept them around for the packaging. These have expired. This is one of their like liquefied lipstick things. It looks like a lipstick inside it, but that's just the liquid. Looks really, really stunning. And then I have one of the Dior Attic lipsticks. Um, this is again in like a red. And again, I like more full on reds, but these you can pull out and then it just has a sheer balmy red lipstick inside it. Really, really pretty packaging again here. And then I have something similar here. I think this is also, yeah, this is one of the newer ones, but this has like the holographic, like shiny thing here. And then again, it pulls out and this is like a little pink thing that is also really pretty. But again, I don't wear shades like this anymore necessarily. And then I was sent some PR by Florasis. This is so pretty. Again, you need to press it here. So this is the compact. You press it down here and then it pops out and then the lipstick comes out. Again, not my shade, but so pretty, so ornate that I had to keep it. Speaking of ornate packaging, I also have, um, I think I need to hold it up like this. This is from Zishi. This is one of their dragon lipsticks. Again, this was sent to me in PR. I've kept this one in the box because it's just so ornate and pretty. Um, you have the dragon on the bullet, and then this is in their classic red. I've only worn it one time. Uh, again, the embossing is just something I didn't want to ruin, and um, I kept it in the box and with the little thing here as well. And as I mentioned, I also just keep things because they're pretty or unique. This is from Catrice and this was a limited edition they did. So you have like the sparkly lid and then inside it is a Dazzle Bomb lipstick, which was this metallic lilac, which is just not something I would wear. It was pretty as a topper though, but this is so different from Catrice even that I was like, I need to keep that around forever. Uh, something I also wanted to keep around is this Besame lipstick. This is from their Snow White collection. Um, and this is such a unique lipstick bullet. Like, do you see that? It's very different from other lipsticks you might have seen. And I like this, but this didn't have any lasting power on me. So I love the color, but I didn't love the formula for myself. So that's why I ended up decluttering that. Um, then I have... I think a collector's item. I'm not a Rihanna fan, but I did end up with one of the Rihanna lipsticks from the MAC collection. When did that, when did this come out? I don't know. But this is the Riri Ru with the signature. Again, something I practically didn't wear because guess what? I found out I didn't like this formula. So that's also another reason why I've never owned Ruby Woo from MAC because Riri Ru is essentially Ruby Woo, but with Rihanna's signature on it. 
So I like the shade of it, but I don't love the formula. Something again where I like the shade and I really love the packaging, but I don't love the formula is the YSL Rouge Volupté Shine. And this is a shiny, really dark berry shade. This formula in this kind of shade, not a match made in heaven, but I love how the gold contrasts with the plum. So I don't know if they still do that packaging. That's a very old lipstick. And then I just have Rest in Peace by Beauty, some of my favorite lipsticks ever. Um, just because I've worn it so much, like this looks gross. But this is Rhubarb. This was my favorite shade by them. And that's why I've kept that, that one around. The packaging, because it is that rubberized packaging, it got a little sticky. Um, and then I did go to the By Beauty Lip Lab in New York uh, in 2019, so five years ago. And I made my best nude and I made my best darker red. Turns out that around that time I was buy starting to buy Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. This one is exactly like Velvet Muse, and this one is exactly like Velvet Jazz. <laughs> Which is why these I've never really used all that much, even though was, this was a lot of fun to do. And, oh, these don't, no longer smell. Now this one a little bit. But yeah, this one I gave a floral fragrance, and I felt the fragrance they put in these, um, you can opt to have fragrance put inside it, I thought was far too strong for a lipstick. So that's why I also didn't end up wearing them. But yeah, it's a good memory to still have them. I do have a fragrance in here that is almost gone. This is an Alien Summer Edition. It was a special edition uh, by Mugler. And I used to wear this as my travel fragrance all the time. Yeah, the minute I smell this, I'm taken back to all of the different trips because I would only ever use this if I traveled. So whenever I smell this, it's instant vacation mode. So that's why there's still a little bit left so I can still smell it. Um, but yeah, this is now living in the box because it's almost gone. And also in here are blushes, bronzers, highlighters, and a couple of face palettes. Again, some of these are very old and some of them I just have because I like the packaging. These are all five of the first round of Kaleido's uh, blushes we got. I got all of the shades, not all of the shades worked for me. And I have to say, I like the more neutrally tones they came out with last year a lot better than I do these ones. The one I wore the most, this was like something like Dreamwalk, but it's very rosy glow from uh, Dior, which I tend to wear more. So that's why I ended up decluttering that one. I have the neutrally brown one. These don't have stickers on with the name. So if I don't remember the name, that, then I do apologize. They have this bright orange and then they did this peachy tone and they did a red and just this lace design which is so stunning this was a very warm toned red it was a bit a bit too much of a brick red so it didn't quite work for me i really enjoy the packaging of this little ciate number if you've ever seen my shop my stashes you know i use this a ton in these uh in the fall season because I just love this shade then. But I found out in my most recent declutter that shades like this, I don't really tend to reach for. So since this still looks pretty now, I'm like, I'm gonna keep it in my uh, makeup, like makeup memory box. So this is in the shade Matchmaker. And then also for my most recent declutter is the addition of this Florosis eyeshadow palette. No, it's a face palette, I should say. Um, this was again sent to me in PR and because they have such beautiful packaging, I just can't get rid of it. Plus, it's good to have a couple of these things that were sent to me in PR because I, I don't get sent a whole lot. And when brands do find my channel and they send me a message saying like, hey, can we send you things? I always feel super honored. Um, and I feel uh, really honored by Florosis that they wanted to send me some things. So that's why I did keep around some of their things. And then this doesn't have pretty packaging, but because it is such a good blush from Essence, but it was discontinued. I still have one of the matte touch blushes from Essence. This is in the shade Blossom Me Up. And this for the longest time was like my favorite mauve tone blush. Like I've worn this so much. This packaging feels like it's about to break as well. Um, so yeah, just a reminder of how good Essence blush is. And that's why this one is still in my makeup collection in my makeup memory box today. Um, I also decided to declutter my Melt Digital Dust blushes 
the last time I decluttered my makeup collection because I just don't reach for these enough, but they're just too pretty to, to get rid of. So I have Raw Honey here. And I have the shade Buzzkill. These are, again, too similar to things I already have in my makeup collection. No need to keep them around, but I do want to hang on to them because they are so pretty. Similarly here with these things. I think I decluttered these last year. These are the bronzer and highlighter from Charlotte Tilbury. Charlotte Tilbury is a brand that I essentially don't buy anything from anymore because none of it really works. Like this was far too warm toned, but it's so pretty. Love the silver packaging. And then in the gold packaging, you got the bronzer, but the bronzer was just a bit off. Like the undertone of this doesn't really work for me, even though so many people I follow have hit pan on this and loved it to pieces. The bronzer in the Hollywood Flawless Filt, no, Film Star Bronze and Glow, that product. That bronzer is far better for me than the single bronzer. So that's why that ended up being decluttered. I also have some Natasha Denona in here. So here is the Love Cheek Duo from the Love Collection, which I mean, it has this really sparkly, like playful packaging. I did not like this. It has a cream blush and then this highlighter. It looks stunning, but I didn't like the way these products worked on me. I'm just keeping it around because it has pretty packaging. And again, something I'm keeping around because it has pretty packaging is this guy here. This is by M Cosmetics. I still have one of the shades in my active makeup collection, but I knew I wanted to keep one of them because I just like the formula of this and I really enjoy this sort of packaging because they have changed the packaging on these since I got mine. So this frosted glass and then with that dope, like that pump that, that it has, it now just has like a, a dropper style. So you now just have this like rubbery thing to squeeze it into. And this is like a pump sort of system. So they've changed that applicator. So I wanted to keep that around for just for the fun packaging and the fun shade, even though I have a shade like it from Apieu that is a bit more cooler tone. This is quite an orange toned red. So that's why I kept the Apieu one over this one. One of the oldest makeup pro products in my makeup memory box for sure. This is Georgia from Benefit. And this is back when they still had the lit that came off. I still have the brush. And I used to use this as face powder back when I didn't know what a face powder wash was. Um, it's really pretty. It's a peach. I got this because I had a friend back when I was first getting into makeup who used nothing but Benefit products. So I was trying out those things. And this was in my makeup collection for a long time. Also in the categories of pretty packaging, if these look a little tarnished, that's because Dior used to put their blushes in actual metal packaging, especially this one is really he heavy. This is the new tan transit edition. I think actually it was this highlighter I got with that little, you know, the little box I showed you at the start. And this is really pretty. It's far too golden toned, not my shade at all. And I've only ever put my brush inside of the D um, so that I wouldn't ruin the packaging too much. But yeah, that's why I didn't use this more. Um, so, and I think this is the blush. Uh, this is the Nude Air Glowing Gardens. No, this is also a highlighter. Um, and this has the floral imprint. We have these, this packaging starts to tarnish after a while because it is actual metal and not plastic that you got at the time. So loving that from Dior. And then I still have one of my Too Faced. This is the Love Light Highlighter in Ray of Light. This is one of the peachy toned highlighters that I used to love. I love that sort of embezzled, like uh, beveled, that's the word for it, sort of um, pan that it has. It's really, really pretty. And then another thing I also have is the Too Faced Sweethearts Flush, Blush, whatever, in Peach Beach. These things, who remembers these? Every This was duped into oblivion. And I just wasn't wearing this anymore because I have so many peachy tone blushes. So that's why this one ended up in the um, makeup memory box. And again, for the packaging mainly. And just recently Catrice came out with this highlighter, very much inspired by Too Faced. This is the Heart Affair highlighter in Stole My Heart. And this is just really pretty as well. And I really like the fact that this is like actual red, a red heart. It was from a Valentine's Day collection. Um, I only got that product in like this year. So 
Very often products have to be in my makeup collection for a while before I decide to put it in with the rest of the makeup memory box, but that one got to like to go in like straight away. Then we have this Too Faced blush. This is their Fruit Cocktail Blush Duo in Berries and Bubbly. I remember this like one side being very glittery and not loving it for that reason, so I didn't end up wearing this as much as I thought. Yeah, that's another Too Faced product with really pretty packaging. And then just because it has pretty packaging, the Hades Color Pop Everybody's Got a Weakness highlighter. So this is a Super Shock highlighter, and I just really enjoy the packaging of this. And that's why it is in my makeup memory box. You'll find not a lot of ColourPop in my makeup memory box because I don't, I don't necessarily love the packaging that ColourPop does, but this one was special. And if you think we're there, we're not, because I have more blush, bronzer, and highlight. These are all, ooh, it's, they're all falling, but these are all by the bomb. This entire stack is all the bomb blush. I think it's mainly blush. Um, but I have Bomb Springs. Um, I used to collect these and they just have really pretty packaging. So here's what that one looks like. Um, it's just, again, a shade I had too many times already. I have Bomb Desert, which th this is how I know because this is a bronzer blush and this is a pink tone bronzer. This is how I know why pink tone bronzer doesn't suit me. Uh, and then I have another one that comes from that same line. This is Bomb Beach. I don't think they still do this. This was a really gorgeous, like, peachy pink blush. Really pretty. And then they did, like, sort of like a new rendition. This is the Bomb Fire Beach Goer. And this has a blush and highlighter kind of thing in it. Um, so it has this, like, Nars Orgasm Super Shimmery thing. And then it has this really nice, cool toned pink, like a pinky lavender, really different. I had not heard anybody talking about it. It was very shimmery, very intense, which is why I didn't love that one. So I didn't wear that one as much. Hot Mama, a classic, a classic. Again, that Nars Orgasm sort of vibe. I like this one better than my Nars Orgasm. So this did get a lot of use in the end, uh, but I have other shades uh, blushes by other brands that have that shade and then they started doing the um, more sustainable packaging so this is third date so this doesn't have the magnet but it just has this cardboard flap which makes it not that easy to open and this was just a little bit too deep for me and I think this was the lightest shade they did so um, that's when I stopped buying the bomb actually I think this is the last thing by them that I've ever tried but yeah they were a really good brand and they did really fun packaging. And then of course, something I tracked down because I wanted to have all of them, the Instain blushes that look like vintage magazines. They are so much fun. This is, this is the collector part of me. So I think this is Toile, yes, this is the red. Uh, I still have all the little sleeves as well. This is Toile. It was a bit too orange toned for my liking, so not perfect, but still very fun. Uh, Argyle. This is really, really pretty. Again, really fun packaging. This is the peachy pink, like the soft baby pink. This is the one that took me the longest tra to track down because I think I got most of these when these had already been like discontinued. This is Hound Tooth, and Hound Tooth is their mauve. Was a bit, a bit, bit deep. The, these were intense. These were intense. Like, there's a reason why these are called the In Stain, because they stained. This is Lace, which is the first one I got, and it's this really nice bright fuchsia pink. This is brighter than Dior's Rosy Glow. It's like more, more impactful. And then I have Swiss Dot, which is like an orange tone. Really pretty if you had deep skin. This is like the best one ever. And then the plum one is Pinstripe. So this is like a cooler tone plum. Really, really pretty. Yeah. This is very similar though to Rapture. Rapture, Rapture from Urban Decay that I still have in my collection. So that's why these ended up being decluttered because the shades weren't that unique anymore. But because the packaging is so much fun, I had to keep it around. And then we have eyeshadow palettes. 
There are quite a few eyeshadow palettes in this box as well. Not that many singles or anything, because I'm usually not that attached to my singles. But I did put in this from Chanel. This is the shade New Moon. This is one of their cream shadows, and mine is just super dry, but I've always liked this shade. It's very unique, which is why I decided to keep this one around. And here's the reason why this box had to be so big, because some of these palettes are big. One of the oldest products in my makeup collection, the Smokin' Eyes Sexy Eye and Brow Kit from uh, Benefit. I remember picking this up in Harrods. That's where I bought this. And I, I this is why I know, like, I grays and taupes are just really into my comfort zone. You get some eyeshadows, you got some brow products in here. I used to travel with this all the time back in the day. I just have two of these little uh, discontinued essence palettes. The I like to mauve it, mauve it, and the dancing green. These are the two that I said decided to keep around because I really enjoy the color stories. Again, packaging wise, nothing special, but proof that essence can do good eyeshadow. And that's another reason why I still have this. This is the Essence Silver Glitter Show. And this has, like the Natasha Denona product I showed you, these glitters that fall down. And this is very similar to the Stila palettes that we used to have. And this was a limited edition collection. I think it was the first time that Essence and Catrice had a joined sister love collab limited edition collection. And I got, I remember having one of the Catrice palettes and two of these. I also had the Pink Glitter Show, which had like gold packaging with glitter, like pink glitters in them. Um, but I liked this one better in terms of like color story. So that's why I kept this one around, but I wasn't really wearing it. So that's why it had to go into the makeup memory box and it's got pretty packaging and really good quality eyeshadow. Some more small things then. This uh, Sugar Pill palette. I decided to put into my makeup memory box because this is just cute. It's really, really cute. Not something I wear more anymore though. And then I have some of my old Dior things. This is super old. I just like the packaging of this because this slides open and then you have the mirror popping up and it has these like cocky shades in. Really pretty. I wasn't wearing it though anymore, so it had to go. And then this, this is the pink one, yeah. Graphic Lights, one of the first palettes I ever bought by Dior. And the reason why I keep it around is because Dior no longer does this packaging with this reflective CD in it. They're now slimmer and they have the silver stripe running through them. So because the packaging has changed, I kept one of the old ones I still have um, and I have that one. Most of this makeup memory box is taken up by one palette of each of the Essence and Catrice Disney collabs that I tried in the past. The first one, I think this was the first one, right? Yeah, so I don't necessarily remember anymore which one goes with which, but I do remember that this Ar Ariel palette is from the first line that Essence did. So around the time that Essence and Catrice that the sister love that the Silver Glitter Show came from, Essence did, I think, four palettes. I did a video with this. I know I did. My friend actually bought these and got them shipped to me from Germany. And she could find three at her local day M. So this was sent to me from, like, Munich. Because she lives in somewhere around Munich. That's where she's from. And she sent me these. So thanks to Yvonne for sending this to me. Um, but yeah, this is, I, I think, the best color story that Essence and Catrice have done in terms of, um, like, being true to, to the movie and the, the shades we get into uh, from the characters because we have an Ursula shade. We have, oh, Flounder, his name is. I always know the Dutch names. We have Sebastian in here. We have Ariel's, like, clothing and her hair and the sea, the ocean. Everything is represented here. And that's why I really enjoyed it. These were in the best quality, though, which is why I decluttered, like, the, fir the first time I decluttered this entire thing, I got rid of most of my Essence and Catrice limited edition palettes because, because as lovely as these are, I didn't have to keep around the color stories I didn't really enjoy. And this way I still have the reminder of that collection, but I have the one palette that I like best. Then uh, Catrice actually had a Disney Villains collection as well at some point, And the palette I kept from that one is the Cruella palette. I think there was also a Maleficent one and another one I don't remember, but I kept this because it's grays and a pop of red. Um, the quality again on these wasn't the best. 
So that's why um, I only kept one as a reminder. It's like, how did they go together? But I don't, I don't remember for sure. I think the next one we got are, is this collection and then Essence did the princesses and Catrice did the villains in the square packaging. Um, I tried the entire line. I had all three of the palettes from both brands and did a video with it. I'm pretty sure about that. And the Jasmine palette with like the grays and the purples. This was also pretty decent quality, so I was pretty happy with it. We even got some duochromes in these. I think we had a Mulan palette in here and another one. I don't remember exactly. It was a long time ago. And then I remember from the villains, we had the Evil Queen and we had Maleficent as well. But from Catrice, this line, the color stories just didn't really go and they had pressed glitters in. So this is the Ursula palette, which I mean, for someone who has like purple in her entire being and only getting like two or three purples is just a, like all of these had these warm orangey tones in, which I didn't love. The quality of these weren't great, but because Ursula is one of my favorite Disney villains, I decided to keep her palette around and I enjoyed that one quality wise the best. Yeah, one of the other collections was actually the reverse. So we got the villains from Essence and the princesses from Catrice. And the one that I kept from the uh, villains here was again, Ursula. Um, and here we get a little bit of a better color story actually. I remember one of the other ones was Scar and I don't remember the third villain we got, but we have some more purples in here. Again, some peachy tones. And this had some pretty shades in, but again, not the best quality. And I felt the same way about Belle. Um, this was pretty though, and I think the color story goes with the character quite well because we have the blue of her day dress and then the yellows of her like fancy ballroom dress. We have some beast in here as well. So this is nice. We get some different pan sizes here. And this was pretty, it was very light though. That was the only thing there. And then from the Disney classics line, when they did um, some classics from Essence in this rectangular style, and then we also got some from this, um, this classics line. The Catrice one is the Lady palette. This is very warm toned, but it has some really stunning shades in, and this was my favorite of the ones that we got then. And we have the Dumbo palette which again is some, a really unique color story, which is why I kept it around. Yeah, this is the Essence and Catrice bits. We just have palettes that are special to me, special ones. And these are some really old things. So one of the oldest things from my entire makeup collection is this sleek palette. This is Eau Naturelle, which is from the days when sleek did the waffle cone sort of print, which they stopped doing like years before they ever were discontinued. I don't think Sleek is around anymore, at least not as much. This was my Urban Decay Naked 2 before I ever owned the Urban Decay Naked 2. That's how long this has been in my makeup collection. This is old, but it was my favorite for a very long time for a good reason. And this is also very old from KVD Beauty, the Monarch palette. Lovely packaging, it had warm tones, cooler tones, and true neutrals. It had a rose golden that I love. This orange was pretty and three highlighter shades. No longer around, but I really did enjoy that palette. This one is special to me, the nude toot from um, the Bomb because I got this for two euros. Um, they were having a sale. I was in Denmark. I was at End Other Stories and they had a sale of all of the De Bomb products that they were selling and this palette was only two euros. So it reminds me of that trip and getting it for cheap. And it's a great reminder of the Balm eyeshadow quality because I have now decluttered all of my The Balm eyeshadow palettes. And then of course, the neutral tone palette that taught me what a neutral tone palette can do if, it's, if it suits my skin tone, the Lorac Pro 3. I decluttered this one this year um, and this has to stay because this is one of three palettes that I always told myself I could get a backup if I ever hit pan on it or if it was ever discontinued. And this is one of the only three palettes I have ever been like wanting to get a backup of. Since I've never hit pan on it and I don't think it's discontinued and I still have mine and I'm no longer like super interested in this color story, I don't mind not having a backup of this one. So that's why I don't have that. And one of the reasons why a lot of the palettes that are nostalgic to me aren't in this makeup memory box is because I never decluttered them. 
Uh, either they are Urban Decay palettes and they have their own special little box, or uh, they are like a Too Faced palette or an ABH palette, and I've since either decluttered them or I've kept around the shades that I liked. So I've reworked them into my makeup collection, you could say. And then I just have some other things here that just have pretty packaging. Tarte, High Tides and Good Vibes. Again, this was a declutter this year, and I was just realizing the only reason I'm keeping this palette around is because it's unique, it's got stunning packaging, and also inside it, it's a little differently from what we've ever seen Tarte do. So that's why that one has to stay in the makeup memory box. And again, not something I'm using because it's a rainbow color story, but I've shown you this so many times in my makeup collection videos and decoders. This is the classic horror palette from LA Splash, and it's got unique packaging, it's holographic, and then you just get a true rainbow. It's really stunning. It's very unique from a rainbow uh, palette color like perspective as well. So that's why I can't get rid of that one, but I don't use it anymore. And then of course, these two, the Game Beauty ones. I decluttered these last year, and I decided that these have to go into a makeup memory box. These palettes are video game inspired. I still have my Victory palette in my active makeup collection, but this packaging is just incredibly stunning. So that's why I can't get rid of these. And finally, sent to me in PR, is this Zishi palette. So this has, it slides out. I still have all the packaging here because I don't want to damage it. It has the two lions or dragons. I don't know what they are on top, and then it has that pearlescent topper, and then here is the palette inside it. It's super pretty, not necessarily my vibe in terms, of, in terms of color story, but I do really appreciate that they sent this to me in PR, and if the packaging is, is this stunning, like even this outer box, like it's so pretty, so that's why that stays, and those are all of the bits that are in my makeup memory box. I know some people were curious, but these are the things I've kept around over the years. Some of it's super affordable and just incredibly nostalgic. Some really, really old things that are at least two decades old or that were even like hand-me-downs from like family members and stuff. So yeah, a lot of things here very nostalgic to me, and I really hope you enjoyed watching this video today. Thank you so very much for watching. Let me know in a comment down below what your makeup memory box holds. I would love to know. And for now, thank you so very much for joining me. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.